You're listening to the Monday Market Highlights brought to you by Milford. Good morning. It's Monday the 13th of December and I'm Roland from Milford. US inflation continues to accelerate with annual inflation in November of 6.8%, the highest print on record since 1982. Food and energy prices remain an issue in the US, increasing 0.7% and 3.5% month-on-month respectively. Energy prices are now up 33% year-on-year. Backing out these more volatile metrics, core inflation increased 0.5% month-on-month or 4.9% year-on-year. These were roughly in line with market expectations. Within core inflation, there are some things you could consider transitory, such as used car prices or airline tickets. Backing these out, inflation grew 0.3% month-on-month or 2.6% year-on-year. Now, some of the stickier components of inflation, such as owner's equivalent rent, are continuing to grind higher, which is a concern. This particular metric grew 0.4% month-on-month and is up 3.5% year-on-year, accelerating again. Initial jobless claims in the US, a measure of those entering unemployment, came in below expectations at 184,000 versus 215,000 expected, implying fewer people in the US are exiting the workforce. This was actually the lowest print since September 1969. In addition, job openings for October were released last Thursday, which ticked up to 11 million, only slightly changed from the record 11.1 million job openings in July. It's safe to say the labour market is very tight in the US. Domestically, the RBA held their monthly meeting and to no one's surprise, they left the official interest rate unchanged. Turning to equity news, the consortium trying to buy Sydney Airport was given the green light by the ACCC, which came as a bit of a surprise to some who thought given the consortium held stakes in other airports, such as Melbourne, it could raise some concerns. Now, they aren't out of the woods yet, but Sydney Airport shares rallied 2.9%. However, it still trades at a $0.16 per share discount to the $8.75 offer. The ACCC also approved Cleanaway's proposed acquisition of Swayze's Sydney assets. The Cleanaway share price didn't really react to the news. Iron Property raised $50 million of equity to acquire approximately $160 million of assets. The key asset here was a 50% stake in an office asset located in Cremorne, Melbourne, which cost them $130 million. They raised at $1.55, which was a 6% discount to its pre-raised price. Shopping Centres Australia released an update on the valuation of their properties, which grew significantly over the past six months. The cap rate compressed by around 50 basis points, which saw their portfolio of assets increase on average by almost 10% in just six months. This highlights the significant capital demand for neighbourhood shopping centre assets in Australia. EBOS Group announced the acquisition of Life Healthcare for $1.2 billion, representing an 11.5 times EBITDA multiple. Life Healthcare is one of the largest independent distributors of third-party medical devices, consumables and capital equipment, and in-house manufactured allograph material in Australia and New Zealand, and it also provides EBOS with an entry into the Southeast Asian market. They funded this via a 640 mil placement and are currently conducting a $100 million retail offer. The balance will be funded by debt. Looking to the week ahead, Domestically, we have the Westpac Consumer Confidence Index out on Wednesday. This will be quite an interesting data point, given it will capture a period where all of Australia is out of lockdown and should provide a good barometer of how people are coping with what is quite a volatile environment. We also have Australian employment data out for November, with the market expecting a 200,000 increase in total employed people and the unemployment rate to drop to 5%. In the US, we have the Fed's interest rate decision, where the market expects no change to the current 0.25% policy rate. However, Fed Chairman Jerome Powell's speech will be closely analysed as investors try and get a sense of how the Fed are thinking about the inflationary pressures in the US. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week.